Salute omnis, this is I'm Amelia, also known as the Martian Geek. And welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Bros. 3. In the last episode, pipes. Pipes, piranha plants, and nipper plants. And a rather obnoxious underwater level. Show of hands, does anyone actually like 7-4? Like I said before, there have certainly been worse levels in Mario games, including this one. But that by no means makes this one fun. In fact, if you're not worried about skipping levels or using inventory items, I would honestly suggest just using a cloud to bypass this one. In fact, this is probably one of the best levels in the game to use a cloud on, because besides the annoyance factor, it doesn't give you anything important, it doesn't pull you into itself automatically, and because there's a pipe immediately after it, you don't have to worry about your cloud getting wasted if you die on the next level. But enough about 7-4. Let's move on to 7-5, which is definitely a lot more fun than the last one, though it is another maze, so if you don't like those, this one won't be very nice to you. And this one's like actually a maze, not the pseudo-maze that 7-2 was. Is there anything in any of these blocks? I also kind of don't want to hang around in any one room too long in this one, because this is another of those where I tend to have my time running low by the end. Oh, hey, bob bombs And you cannot use them to smash blocks. Still not sure if you can use bob bombs to blow up the brick blocks in this game, but... Um, actually didn't mean to shoot that guy, I meant to pick up that block. But apparently I can't. Also, more invisible blocks that's helpful to hit ahead of time. Now, mind you, I may be- I may get lost in this one. I don't actually have the way through it and memorize or anything. But more invisible blocks. And more cliched underground music. That one doesn't have an invisible block in it, but that one does. Power up block if you need it. Oh, well, it's a thousand points, I guess, and I'm probably not coming back here to get it, so... Let's see, this one leads to up here, and, you know, this one kind of should have had a longer time limit. Ooh, one up. Actually, I'm not sure if levels in Super Mario Bros. 3 can have a time limit longer than 300 units. In Super Mario World, they could either have 0, 200, 300, or 400. And, well, I'm gonna go ahead and take that, because you can use that to thwack blocks, which you can't do with the Fire Flower. Okay, wait, now where am I going? I'm uh, not there. But Super Mario Bros. 3, I haven't exactly been keeping track, but I think every level so far has had 300 seconds on the timer. Well, 300 units of time, they're not really seconds. In and out of pipes, in and out of pipes. Ah, yeah, well, Mario is a plumber. He should be used to this kind of thing. And I guess if you're really good at duck sliding, you could probably shortcut through here. And I kind of want to see where that pipe goes. And it goes here. With many green Koopas. Any invisible blocks in here? I don't think so. I wouldn't be surprised if I actually do end up coming very close to running out of time on this one. More invisible blocks. And this pipe leads whoa. Yes, it leads whoa. The leading exporter of woe in the pipe land. Wall of throw blocks we can get past here. And yeah, not dealing with that spiny. Admittedly, I do have a power-up, so it wouldn't be that much of a problem, but still. Down to 112 units of time. I think I should have this one in the bag, but I'm not going to count on it. At least it's not really that difficult. Oh, hey, another one-up. I actually didn't realize that was there. 
Also, can I just say the underground level music sounds kind of silly when sped up? Okay, that level is actually quicker or easier to get past in the given time than I thought it was. I'm very sure I've run out of time at least once in that one, but I might have been not so good at finding my way around it. Which is kind of ironic, because I was probably more familiar with this game as a kid than I am now. Also, this pipe is the most useless pipe ever, because it takes you absolutely nowhere. Well, it does take you somewhere, but you can't go anywhere from that somewhere. I don't know what the purpose of that pipe even is. But another mushroom house that we can't use. And I'm almost at 104,000. So, the dilemma. Do I use the mushroom and depower myself? Eh, what the heck. Pick a box. Pick the second one. And we get a frog suit. Which is not very useful at this point, because... We just did the last underwater level in the game, and I don't recall that there are any other levels in the game that have water. So yeah, frog suit, not exactly the most useful thing in the world right now. I think that one is a is one that gives you a choice of three items. And let's see. Do I want to do the fortress first, or do I want to do the piranha plant first? That piranha plant sitting there is actually World 7's equivalent of the Hammer Brothers. You might have noticed you didn't see or hear any Hammer Brothers on this map. Well, that's because there are those things instead. And actually, I have a few more frog suits than I would have thought, so... Just for the laughs, let's go ahead and use a frog suit on this level, even though it contains absolutely no water whatsoever. And I can't even make a running jump. Yeah, most useless power-up ever, but... Since this level does indeed give you a power-up, I would have had to use up an inventory slot anyway. Also, nippers that go up and down. The thing about the piranha plant levels is, instead of actually fighting just one or two enemies, you actually go through a whole mini-level here. And that pipe clearly does not go anywhere, but somehow it takes us down to here where we can get our item. And it's another P-Wing. I do seem to have a lot of those, but I can't complain because they're one of the more useful items you can get. Go through this pipe, and I actually don't remember for sure where this one goes, but I think I know. Yeah, that's the other one that leads to the path that would be unblocked if you'd beaten the fortress. But that time, it was the second fortress. And speaking of fortresses, that's where we're going next. Geez, how many P-Wings do I have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I don't really want to use them. Okay, now this level is interesting. This room is made entirely out of brick blocks. This room is seemingly completely empty. This is one of those that kind of tries to psych you out. Because there are no enemies in this one other than the boss. No, seriously. There are lava pits that you can die in, and you can certainly die from running out of time. And in fact, this level just confirmed or disproved my theory that all of the levels in this game have a 300 second time limit, because this one only has 200. But the thing about this level is, it's more of a puzzle than a, an action-oriented one. You have to figure out your way, or you have to find your way out of this one, which is easier said than done, and a little bit counterintuitive. Or at least it can be. But you can get a P-switch there, and if you hit that, you can get many, many coins. For that reason, this is actually also a good level to farm lives on if you're low at this point in the game. Because you can basically just keep doing that. Keep coming back to this room. Hit the P-switch. Step on it. And coins! When did we teleport into New Super Mario Bros. 2 here? But that's quite enough of that. Let's go back to this room and... You might have noticed that... Actually, I should probably just let the time run out because... I'm not sure if I'm actually going to have enough time to beat the level at this point, and... I don't have any fear of actually running out of lives, so... So... Let's just get all of the coins. Well, actually, let me check something. I don't... I think there are only two doors in this room, but... Yeah, just two. Okay, maybe I should just go ahead and try to beat the level anyway. If 
I'm gonna die anyway. Okay, hit the P-switch, and this time, don't drop down. This time, go in this door. Come in here. And you get taken to another room, and if I could just learn to jump on the pipe properly... You can come down here. And free Tanuki suit! How often do you see bonus rooms in a fortress? Get the Tanuki suit. And you can come out here. But you're gonna need this suit, because... You actually have to fly to find the exit to this place. And it's up here somewhere. There it is. We need to get in that pipe. Now, of course, if you go in here with the P-Wing, which I used to think was mandatory to, to complete this one. If you come in here with the P-Wing, then it's easy enough. Just go right up there and pee your way to the top. Um, that sounded kind of odd. But if not, you can do the level the intended way and get the Tanuki suit. And the timer's frozen at 10 seconds, so why don't I practice the statue stomping? Die, Golseer, die! So, that was a fortress. Not exactly a difficult one or anything. Also, and spade. And full inventory. But, moving on. I'm just gonna close my eyes and hit the V button three times randomly because, no matter what I get, I will not get any lives from it. Ah, <laughs> it would have been funny if I'd actually gotten something from that. But nope. On to 7-6. And this is one of those that isn't really that hard, but I can never quite remember the layout of it. It's another vertically oriented wrapping level with a lot of pipes, and that was interesting, what that Koopa just did there. Also, donut lifts, apparently. At least they don't bounce. Let's see, can I... Do I want to try to get that question mark block? Yeah. But this level introduces a new type of platform. Meet the directional elevators. Well, I guess I don't know if you can really meet them since they're inanimate objects, but... We get introduced to them, anyway. And there are a couple of different types of these. This kind is spawned from a block that looks like an exclamation mark block. Or an exclamation mark. And it spawns this ghostly looking platform, and every time you jump on it, it changes direction. Counterclockwise, I guess. But there are also ones that only go one direction, such as that one, which only goes up. I wonder if the Tanuki suit will actually help me at all in this level. Probably not, but you never know. Careful maneuvering around the spikes. And here's one that only goes left. Also, you can only have one of these on the screen at a time. And if you want to get that question mark block, you actually have to double back there. Not that you really need to, since it just contains a coin. Hmm. Actually, do I have to... Yeah, I think I want to go down here and use this to get up into that pipe. Like I said, I don't really remember the layout of this level too well. Ah, I lost my Tanuki. Or, wait a minute, actually. Maybe I'm supposed to take the other platform from down here. Ah, back to the beginning. Probably gonna run out of time on this one, too. I haven't seen any power-ups yet. Also, more Koopa silliness. Let's see what this contains. Um, it contains a coin that was absolutely not worth it. Okay, let's see if I can actually direct this thing properly. Move faster, platform! Okay, maybe not. Because it doesn't... it apparently has a time limit. Okay, then how exactly do I get up here? Oh, wait, duh. I'm supposed to use the left-facing platform. I am so gonna run out of time, though. There we go. Now why was that so difficult? <laughs> 50 units of time left. I'm not going to make it. 
Oh, you can only have one of any type of these. Also, I think I actually need this one. Because the others don't actually go up at all. Spikes. Well, no, okay, I guess it doesn't quite go in a circular fashion. Because, well, it never goes down, but it goes the other three directions. And time up. I think that's the first time I've actually run out of time in this LP. So, that was something. At least I know how to get through the level now. Also, and the Koopa's doing that thing again. Another thing worth noting about these directional elevator platforms is that there is actually a Super Mario World custom sprite version of them, but I've never actually seen it used in anything. Which is kind of a pity, because I actually really like this sprite. It's just kind of cool, I think. And this is the only level in this game it appeared in, so... Note to self, make Super Mario Bros. 3 styled hack, or even just a hack of Super Mario Bros. 3. Have a level, at least one level with directional elevator platforms, and at least one level with... Um, the Kurabo shoe. Okay, so now we're into this part of the level with over 200 units of time left. That's better. Still need my... I need to get a power-up, though. Okay, and this one. Actually, come to think of it, I just rather like dynamic platforms like these in general. Like the growing shrink and the growing and shrinking mushrooms in new Super Mario Brothers games. Things like that. I feel like they're kind of underrated. I mean everybody knows about the enemies and all, but you can you'd be surprised at how much you can do sometimes with just level obstacle or level objects. Well, I mean things like platforms. I suppose a good example of that would be Donkey Kong Country for, uh, Tropical Freeze. But then that game is kind of a good example of almost every aspect of game design, except underwater levels. Okay, here's the exit pipe. Oh, well, second time through it went perfectly fine. Probably not going to get a star, but what do I know? I could go from 99 lives to having 99. Amazing. And probably going to end up saving that end spade game for next episode. Because I think we can fit in one more level. Let's move on to 7-7. Seven, seven. Hmm, wrestling level with athletic music and a pipe leading to the rest of the level. And apparently a wooden... Oh. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm actually going to deliberately take a hit here because I kind of want to be small for this one. Because this is a star run! And this time it's mandatory. Because the entire floor is lined with munchers. So needless to say, you want to hurry your butt right the heck up. And crap, the star just went the wrong way. I'm probably going to die. Yep, I died. Well, that's the downside about being small in that one. Let's see, there are parts later in the level where you actually have to duck under pipes as you're running on the munchers. And I don't really trust the duck run in this game. So, better just to not have to worry about it and have a smaller hitbox from the start. Also, do not hit those star blocks from the left or from the right side. Hit them from the left side. And if you let the star bounce a ways forward, you can sort of get a little bit of extra time on the star. I think I mentioned that back in 7.3, actually. Can't do that with this one, but... Okay, now there's the pipe you need to duck under. Fortunately, that's the rest of the level. And we get three stars. Three useless stars, because... Well, I'm missing one life. I would have gotten one life from getting anything anyway, so... Yeah, the Mario series' first-ever Muncher run, 7-7 in Super Mario Bros. 3. 
And we have done quite enough for this episode. We will finish off World 7 next time with 7, 8, 7, 9, the other fortress, the other piranha plant, and the airship. So, I will see you next time.